working on a daily driver today. I'm about to do some spot correction. I will then follow that up with a good one-step polish. And we have etching, scratches, staining. Uh, we have texture. We have dust nibs. Uh, a lot to work on, and I'm going to take care of them using different types of wet sanding methods, and I'll share that with you today. Welcome back to the channel, good friends. Brian from Apex Detail. Let's get this started. First, we have some staining and etching, and we'll use 3000 grit, and that's just attached to a simple palm sander, and that's the best way to start to get to learn wet sanding. Uh, doing it by hand, you definitely get the feel for it. Uh, you, you get a feel for what you're doing. Uh, you let the surface respond to your touch, and you can easily remove a lot of imperfections using this method. We just removed some small areas of staining and etching, and have we removed a lot of clear? No, not really. Barely measurable. And the important part, which I'm going to show you a little bit later, we removed it without spiking temperatures at all. From there, you can just lightly polish out. Just look at this and see how quickly I polish out the wet sanding marks from 3000 grit, removing some etching and staining that you really would have to hover over with a polisher, run back and forth, and spike the temperatures on that surface. And that's it for the polisher. Just a crisscross pattern up and down, then left and right. I'll remove the residue. I'll grab you guys, bring you in closer. We'll see the staining, the etching outlines are gone. The sand marks are gone, and we have a nice, reflective, shiny surface. And again, keep it simple. All you need is a palm sander and a 3-inch disc. These you can find on their own in the form of a Trizac disc, or you can get them in headlight restoration kits. Okay, uh, another form of damage, people opening their doors on you in a parking lot. You get transfer, you get scratches, and even stings sometimes. But these areas can be improved, and the Griot's Garage finishing papers, you can get them all different types and grits, and also blocks, blocks of your choice. They make many different types. You can pick them up on Amazon if you have Prime. Simply grasp and hold tight the paper, the grit of your choice. I like to start working uh, no lower than 2,500 or 3,000 grit. There's no uh, reason to get that aggressive unless you're removing and fixing and flattening texture. We will get to that towards the end of the video. In most cases, I'm going to sand until I see this white milky substance on the surface. That's going to happen for every color. It's going to look just like that. Unless it's a tinted clear coat, then it'll have a little bit of color. And then I'll stop, rinse off the area, check my work, and if I need to go further, I'll go further. Topical imperfections, such as very light scratches, can be completely removed using this method. Scratches that are through the clear coat and imperfections through the clear coat can be greatly improved. Uh, really cutting back on the attention they'll get when the sun beats down on them, reflects and refracts off of all of those jagged edges within the scratch that you have just now rounded off, and you can make a huge difference. And again, just follow up with a one step or a light polish or a finish polish, wipe off the residue, and you're done.
let's move on to deeper scratches through the clear coat into the base coat or sometimes down into the rubber plastic or metal. Those can only be improved, can only be fixed completely, sending it to a body shop. Uh, so, you know, you can move on from just hand sanding and use machines. There are all kinds of dedicated wet sanding machines that'll even feed water while you're sanding and keep the disc or the paper clean. Or you can use uh, a little mini micro polisher like this if you don't have pads to fit, no worries. Pick up some of the three inch Trizac discs, trace the backing plate, cut them out. They will have hook and loop so you can attach them to the backing plate and get to work. And I'll show you just how effective a little micro machine can be just uh, sniping or spot correcting little areas like this before you do a one step or an enhancement. And you can see using machine how quickly we get that white frothy um, substance and that's clear coat and what I'll do is I'll sand it until I see that either by hand or machine and I'll stop and I'll clear off uh, that residue and check the work uh, now what you want to do just to make sure you're not going too far is take a look at the texture on the clear coat before you start to sand because every clear coat has texture and once you start to wear that texture down where it's uh, it doesn't match the surrounding areas you know you're going pretty darn far and you're definitely going beyond that first 25 microns where I don't like to go below that because most of the UVA UVB and IR block and inhibitors are in there so as you can see that's the little area we have that scratch greatly approved but now we want to blend things in uh, as of now if we just polished it out uh, there could be you know texture going to a little bit of a flat spot and it might draw attention to people's eyes you, you don't know who has the eyes to see this stuff so we want to blend it in and make that sanding that would make that little circle gradual if if that makes sense at all and that's what I did very lightly with 3000 grit we're gonna wipe off the residue we're gonna polish and you're gonna see the improvement on that scratch that's through the clear coat you're really you're gonna to have to in the right light search for it to find it A little bit of uh, polish will remove the residue. I'll take you guys off the stand so I can bring you in closer and see if you can find that scratch that was catching our fingernail that's through the clear coat down into the base coat. And that's all done with very little effort at all, either by hand or machine, and that's wet sanding. Okay, one more quick example texture with a little bit of dust nibs um, and that happens you know when a body shop gets a hold of a vehicle and sometimes it even happens from a new car coming from factory and it can be corrected the important part I need to know is if there is enough clear coat because a factory paint job does not have enough clear coat to remove texture so this is my little trick here to the nib you can see the tape on either end and I'm using the center of the blade to remove the nib keeping the blade straight up and down and there it is there is that dust nib we pulled it safely from the surface we're gonna get the rest of those nibs and then we can start to wet sand back to the depth of the paint yeah if you're removing texture mostly it's done on custom paint jobs where they can lay down an extra few layers of clear so there's room to remove texture make it perfectly flat 
give you that custom look and still have enough clear coat left behind. So after denibbing, we're going to start with 2000 to really cut to the chase, get rid of that texture. We'll switch over to 3000 so we can step down, blend it in. We'll polish it out and you're going to see in no time at all, we'll have a glass flat surface. All right, so we switched over from the 2000 to 3000. Let me show you why wet sanding is huge if you can get used to it. Temperature. We're keeping the temperature on that panel ambient. So the rest of the panel is 60 some degrees, whatever I have the air conditioner turned on at the shop, that's what the panels are. And we don't wanna spike temperatures in one little spot going on it back and forth, back and forth with a polisher. That just spikes temperature. It puts a lot of stress on the clear coat. If we can wet sand, we can keep the temperature down. Uh, we're working quickly. We could switch over to the polisher and just spend uh, just a few seconds, a crisscross pattern that will barely raise the temperature in that area more than five degrees of the rest of the panel. And everything is uh, turned around quickly and safely. That's what I recommend. Okay, did a little bit of polishing just to remove the 3000 grit sand marks. We'll remove the residue and all that is is a one step and just use any one step, one step of your choice, uh, one and done. 3D1, uh, there are many out there to choose from. It doesn't matter, just match it up with the clear coat type, either soft or hard. And as you can see, we now have a flat glass reflective surface. So with quite a bit of wet sanding through the spot correction process, I followed that up with a one step and we have this daily driver looking rather decent. And this can be done on any vehicle. I highly recommend it. If you're not comfortable, grab some test panels from a local body shop. They're more than happy to give some up to you. Uh, set them up on horses, practice, and just get some experience behind your belt and you'll feel comfortable doing it in no time. If you have any questions, don't hesitate. Brian from Apex Detail, catch you in the next video.